Protecting yourself from negative energy is an important skill for empath to learn. However, there will be times when we are so tired and we cannot maintain this shield. This allows negative energy to seep through our defenses. So what can we do? There is actually another vital skill that we don't normally talk about for empath. It has helped me tremendously in dealing with my own emotions. And when you're great at processing emotion, it doesn't matter what negative energy that comes your way or what negative emotion you may match from others. It doesn't affect you as much. In this video, I'm going to explain what this is and how it can help an empath thrive. Hi, I'm Yong Kang. I help people to calm their mind and awaken their spirit. So this vital skill that will help empath thrive is equanimity. Equanimity is about staying balanced and even-tempered despite of whatever challenges or situation you may face. In essence, equanimity is about feeling emotion without getting off-centered or out of your alignment. I first came across this word equanimity in Buddhism books. Buddhists believe that developing this virtue will help them reduce their suffering and create peace of mind. Later when I was researching about my Enneagram type, trying to find out more about Enneagram type 4, I saw that equanimity is actually the virtue of Enneagram type 4. So I studied it a little bit more and do some research. I realized a lot of these qualities are what I learned from spiritual teachings. There are three key elements to equanimity. And number one is to welcome all feelings. As empath, we learn to protect ourselves from negative energy by building a shield around us, by visualizing a shield. When there is negative energy, we avoid the negative energy. Because when we know that when we match the negative energy, it influences and affects us a lot. But sometimes building a protection and a, a shield makes us develop this mindset that we are afraid. We always feel like we need to hide, we always feel like we need to avoid. And we are making ourselves feel very small. It's like we only have a certain corner in this world that we can live in and survive in because all the energy out there are too intense for us. And this means that we cannot show up fully in this world with our own energy. Equanimity, on the other hand, is about embracing all emotions, all feelings. When you embrace emotion, you are not judging whether the emotion is good or bad. It's not like anger, grief, sadness. This emotion are bad, I don't want to feel them. And I only want to feel joy, happiness. Instead, you have this mindset that whatever emotion that comes your way, you can handle it. Because you know that you can possess emotion. When you have this kind of confidence, what you develop is emotional stability. You're telling the world, hey, whatever energy or emotion or vibration that comes my way, I can handle it. And I'm not afraid of you. Equanimity makes you feel so grounded. Yes, there may be times where there is strong and intense emotion coming your way, and it may get you off-centered or out of alignment, but you will soon realize it and come back to alignment very quickly. Empaths are already somewhat scared at dealing with emotions. Because at a young age, we have received so many different impressions. We have to deal with so many different emotions and vibrations. We have tons of practice already. I remember when my dad was alive and whenever my mom was crying very loudly in the funeral, my dad will push us to deal with my mom's emotions because he feel uncomfortable with dealing with someone who is crying. So at a young age, I have already developed a skill in terms of handling someone who is grieving or someone who has intense emotions. So now when I have to deal with people who are grieving or people who are angry, I am somewhat more experienced in dealing with it. I don't get that affected by them. After developing equanimity, whenever I feel like I'm matching someone's emotion, I notice it very quickly and I can come back to my own center. This allows me to be a better empath because I can hold space for another person to process their own emotions. Number two, stay in balance. 
This balance refers to when we are dealing with a difficult situation, we don't run away from it, but at the same time, we don't lose ourselves in the situation or the emotions. As empath, we easily lose ourselves when we have to deal with challenging situations. We merge with another person's energy very quickly. So we need to develop a strong sense of self. We need to know what our energy is and what other people's energy are. So that whenever we start to merge with other people's energy, we could tell that we are going towards their energy. To know that you are losing yourself, you must first have a good sense of yourself. You must first know your baseline emotion and vibration, where you are at, so that whenever someone comes and knocks you off center, you will at least know where your center is. One way to stay in balance is to observe your emotion, but don't add any mental noises or story to the situations. Because this mental narrative will add more to the emotion that you're feeling. So for example, if you are feeling happy and joyful, then you meet a person who is angry, complains a lot and grumpy. Suddenly you feel their energy within you. What you don't want to do is to have this mental narrative that, hey, it sucks. I was feeling happy just now. And now this person comes into my life and I'm feeling grumpy and now I'm complaining and it's affecting my mood. What this does is actually makes you feel more grumpy and angrier. Instead, what you want to do when you're faced with this situation is you want to feel the emotion in your body. You want to acknowledge the anger. You want to acknowledge that you unconsciously match someone's emotion. And you're going to feel this emotion in your body and you're just going to let them go. Perhaps you can go to a neutral place like where I always like to go, like a park and just let off the emotion, let go of the emotion and ground yourself without thinking too much about what the person has done. This is what staying in balance means. Number three is to remain constant through all situations. Equanimity is about creating consistency across inconsistent events. This is about being in the state of mental composure and calmness in all situations. Whether you are being praised by someone or you are being criticized by someone, you want to stay non-reactive and not attached to the outcome. You don't want the outcome to determine how you feel. So for example, one minute you experience a great event, like for example, you get a promotion and you feel very happy. And then the next moment you feel very bad because there is a negative situation. Somebody are jealous of your promotion and you feel very upset or angry. You are just reacting to different circumstances in your life. One moment you're happy, the next moment you're sad, next moment you're angry, happy, upset, happy, upset. This is a very tiring way to live. Instead, you want to be intentional in what you feel first, then respond to the circumstances. You want to determine how you want to feel today first, and then interact with the world with your energy not other people's energy. This is something that I have been practicing at the start of my day. I visualize what I want to feel today and I visualize how I bring this emotion and this feeling to what I do during the day. And this helped me a lot in being intentional in interacting with the world. Of course, there will be some events that are easier to let go than others. For example, if you lose your phone, you may be irritated and frustrated for a few days, but if you lose someone close to you, you may feel grief for a long period of time, and it may take you a longer time to come back to alignment. This takes practice, so you want to start with small little things like missing the bus or missing your favorite TV program. Can you let them go? Can you be not attached to these events? If you feel any emotion, Give yourself some time to process your emotions without adding more mental noise, without reacting to the events. If you have a tendency to be carried away by other people's drama or drama of your own, watch this next video over here.